Okay. Call meeting to order. Tonight is the Board of Sewer Commissioners. It is June 8th. Time is 6.30 p.m. Our location is Swift Speech Community Center, 38 Pleasant Street, Wareham, Mass. 02571. Call the meeting to order. May I have a roll call, please? Final clerk. Sandy Slavin. Peter Dunlop. Jim Jaberti. Bernie Pigeon. <laughs> Thank you. We have a quorum. Do we have any minutes this evening? I don't believe we do, do so we'll bypass, we'll bypass that section. Moving on to item four in the Sewer Commission business, and we have a presentation from Danny Warren. Now, Mr. Warren of Warren Enterprises is one of the bidders on the contract to uh, take care of the sewer problem that we have here at Swiss Beach. The original problem, as you well know, was not satisfactory to the difficulties you were experiencing. And you banded together as we do in our country and got things changed. The contract has been canceled, and so now we've been off the bid. The contract hasn't been awarded, so Mr. Warren has a uh, process that uh, he wants to present to us. And I've seen it, I've heard Mr. Warren a couple times, it's very, very interesting. So I give it over to Mr. Warren. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for coming out. Um, I'm sorry to say, there's been an unbelievable amount of work in the last few years between myself and the town and the state to get to where we are at this point. Um, just for a little bit of a clarification, the process that was first offered the pumps, which we all don't like, and unfortunately at that point, there was absolutely no other alternative because the, the state laws when dealing with asbestos pipes are brutal. So when I was asked to look at it by Mr. Birdie, I started digging in and trying to figure out how to deal with it and how to deal with it. And the pricing to dig it up is just forget it. It's never going to happen. So I started looking for a better way and I come up with what I thought was a better way. So I made this simple model quickly. And I got some help from Senator Pacheco to get the state to look at it. So I reached out and I asked for some help from Senator Pacheco, and he came down and he looked at what I was doing and he said, Why? And I explained it to him. And I explained to him the situation in this community lots of communities just like this community all over America, all over the world. So we went to work as a group and we went out and I made this simple model I'm going to pass from. This was the first one and it was as simple as simple can be. And what I want you to remember is the state approved this one. Uh, because all they care about is where you, you scribe the edges of the asbestos pipe that it catches all those scratchings and shavings and binds them up somehow, some way. So I put together a moisture-cured urethane with, a, with an aliphatic urethane that would react with water and basically explode and turn into a plastic very, very, very quickly. So I just got to pass it around. It's absolutely safe to look at it touchy-feely, right? Yeah. So now then, we showed them that because we wanted to show them that we were working for the real fix for the long, long term. But we didn't stop at that, even though they said, yeah, we think we can make this work. We kept on experimenting and experimenting and experimenting until we got it to this point. So what you're looking at when you look at this, it's, uh, it's, it's clean, there's nothing to worry about. You'll see these little things look like fingernails around these corners. That was a fluorescent light bulb. Because I had to show them that we could line something that was very fragile and it would try to go into a million pieces and capture it before it could fall. So this was done five feet down the ground and we lined the light bulb. So we'll go this way with it. And what you see on the outside, it looks like concrete. That's the urethane and it's triggered by water. Once it hits water, it's over in a matter of seconds. It's all trapped. It's very, very hard. So we're gonna take a, we're gonna dig a pit 20 feet by 30 feet, and we're going to drop our equipment down and we're going to create a workflow. Once we're done, 
we're going to leave that floor and it'll help support that area in the road that it keeps wanting to sink because so the water table is at two feet out there. And as you go down, it gets soupier and soupier and soupier to you just basically end the water after 12, 13 feet. So we'll dig that trench there, or that work pit, and then at the other end where the dirt road starts, we'll dig another sloping pit to bring in the new HDPE plastic welded together pipe. And that pipe will be one solid complete piece of plastic pulled through. And as we're scribing the walls of the asbestos, it will be slid back to the sides. It won't all break up into four pieces, four strips. But that resin will be coming out under pressure in between the splitting head and the pulling head. So it'll act like a piston. And as it goes out into the water, it captures everything and very quickly turns into that hard, solid substance. So that's that's going to be the latter part of the job. So now I'll go back to the beginning of the job. Once we get out there, hopefully within the next two weeks, so we're, we're trying hard to make it do within the next two weeks. And just so you know, the town of Wareham and the sewer department and, and uh, <coughs> the, the park guys and the road guys, our work is all done. It's completely done. We're ready to go to work. We've already got the materials online. We've got everything. We're waiting for the final sign off from the state, which we've been assured is coming very shortly. So what we're going to do, so you guys can understand from the bank to end, you're going to get a lot of bang for the buck this time. There's going to be a brand new water main line laid out there. There's going to be a new gas line laid out there. There's going to be a new road. So over the top of the old sewer that is there now, so no one's ever without their, their sewer facility to use and their water management, we're going to lay a brand new sewer on top of that old asbestos sewer. Uh, there's a lot of negotiation back and forth with the state to get to this point. We're not going to abandon that asbestos pipe down below. We're going to use this new process to split it, spread it, and put a brand new HDPE pipe in. So now what happens is this, this family over here has a plug or a break or a blockage, it's not going to affect the whole neighborhood ever again. That bottom's going to be a raceway and we can go right to it. So coming off of that new sewer, it's going to be pitching and we have the elevations to do it. We've already checked all that. As it drops down and we, when we dig, we'll be replacing brand new ladders coming up to the property line. Once we get to the property line, that's where the town's obligation is stopped. Uh, I've not had negotiations with the town yet, so I probably should talk about this, so I'll talk about it just a little bit. I believe someone, whether it's the homeowner or the town, that last few feet should be shot, maybe another 10 feet to get it totally out of the water table. Uh, down in Florida, that's the way we do them all, so water table's just like here, it's right up there, you gotta, you gotta get out there. So you wind up with a new, welded together plastic sewer system that will never, ever, never leak again. It'll never give you, ever have a problem again. It's not gonna wear out in 10 lifetimes. And then down below, you'll have the same thing. A brand new HDPE main line. It'll act as a raceway in storm events and things like that. And then it'll all drop into the manholes and keep flowing the business as usual. So there'll never be a need for a pump, a booster pump, a grinder pump, or any kind of a pump. Now, as we move on up, we move up further into the neighborhood, and we're going to start losing some of that pitch. You can actually go to the center. So say if it's 600 feet between the two manholes, you go to the 300 foot mark and come out there and go back both directions. You just cut that digging depth in half. So you'll still have the pitch to make it work. So once we start, we won't be blocking the whole road or cutting up the whole road will be taken out a piece of the road. Now when I say we won't be blocking it, we're going to keep it so an emergency vehicle can get through there, not everyday traffic. Um, we anticipate the whole job to take less than three weeks, start to, start to finish. A lot of that depends on how fast National Grid can work to deal with a gas line. The gas line's all over the place out there. They don't even really know where it is all over the place up there. So we came in a couple of weeks ago we did an exploratory with a big truck, you probably saw it out there, and that was a brush, a gentle brush, and a high pressure air compressor, and a vac. And we sucked all that dirt up with a vac and found all those utilities. 
and it's the gas has really got to be changed, no doubt about it. So the first move into it will be will be to start laying a new sewer on top of the old sewer and tying it into those manholes and reestablishing the new water in there. So there'll be a bypass set up for the water all the way. There'll be one bypass set up to capture sewer behind the work and dump over the work site. We're going to work long days. They're not going to be crazy days, but it's going to be 10 million hour days because we're, we're really trying to beat before all the other summer folks come down and the population is to. The, like I said, the only thing that's holding us up from being out there working now. Excuse me? Oh. So once we get everything we need from the state, I just, I thought we were done. We just got 12 more questions today that has to be answered. But you have to realize, this isn't an easy job for them either. They're changing a law that's been challenged hundreds of times, and everybody failed. They could not get there. They, they said they believe this is the best idea they've ever seen, and they're supporting it 100%. They've also said once this is done and it's successful, they're going to back it and take it on to the federal level and try to get it passed across the United States. So here's the other piece to, to realize, just from the taxpayers and the homeowners and everybody. It used to be we could get rid of asbestos pipe in Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont. They've all closed. New Hampshire was the last one. They closed last Thursday. Now the three pieces of pipe that I do have to take out of the ground out there will have to be packaged up and shipped all the way to Idaho. And that will be an unbelievable expense for the town. So the state is realizing that something like this has to come along, something like this has to be approved, and something has to, ch to change. I have friends who've got a big contract down in Cape, another friend's got a big contract in Avon, and they're going to be removing a lot of asbestos, and they just got told last week that their shipping costs will be 15 to 20 times more than they expected now because it's going to Idaho. So what will happen there? They'll shut both of those jobs down and walk off because that's something they can't control. So any questions on anything I've said so far, or we've talked about so far? Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, what are you, you're talking about um, the expense of shipping that pipe to Idaho. Who, who incurs that expense, and how is that distributed? The, well, on this project, the town's going to incur it. And that's the town that's approved has okay yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, they, they know. All right, sorry. But the, the, Yes, yes, sir. Okay, hang on, let me finish on this one first. The, I can absolutely tell you the town's position on this is make it right, really right, and be done with it. So they, and they, they really work hard for you guys. I'm telling you, because I've been in every meeting, they have worked really hard for you. So, and there's more that I don't want to tell you because I'm going to let the town tell you because it's, it's their thunder, not mine. But believe me, there's a lot there's more good things about this than you can hear tonight. Yes, sir, what was your question? Um, so you're going to replace some of the sewer line completely and repair some of it? What, no, what's going to happen is I have to take three sections out to drop the machine down inside the pit. Okay? So those have to be to, to take it apart. So, yeah, I can find the water and dryer than I can get there. <laughs> so what will happen with those, so you guys know, we've hired State gave us three names and said, you're going to need these guys for support. So I'm not an asbestos guy, I'm a water and sewer guy, but I was able to figure out what to do. So we're going to have a company in here, and they will handle all the asbestos and keep the neighborhood safe, keep the work site safe, be responsible for all of that. Um, then there's another company that will come in that will be working for the town of Wareham, and their job will be to look after the people that I hired, to look after the people, to look after the people. <laughs> so, there's, there's, no, there's no money being skimped here. And, and uh, we, we, we tried to bid, I said we, the town tried to bid the job. People would not go near it because of the asbestos. When it was time to go get the bond for the job, could not get them. They wouldn't discuss it. I personally put up $2 million to make this happen. After I put the money up in my company, then the other bond, then the other people's companies, they would bond under my bond. So it's just we're really changing the game completely with what we're trying to accomplish. And I'm not saying I put that money up to, to be braggish or anything. I just want you to know the, 
the effort that has gone forward to get this changed. We, we're bringing in the best contractors there is, Del Sandro. They're coming in, and there's some experts at Deep Dig and Wet Digs. They're digging up in Quincy right now. They're 40 feet down and moving asbestos pipe. So they, they really know this stuff down on Forest Street. I think it's working. So can, any other question at all? So, yes, sir. Do you have the contract of this right now? As of this, the commission as of this afternoon, I have the contract. I'm, we'll put it so this way. I'm a parent low bidder. I'm a approved bidder. And, and I've, I've put everything in place to do the job. But, but we just have to be honest with each other. Until the state signs off on this piece of paper, we're all still hoping. And I don't, I don't believe in the community. You're in limbo right now. But not for much longer. And, but limbo right now. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, and the thing is, it's so different what we're doing. It's so hard to believe that we were asked for one more thing. Those little pieces in your hand look nice. Go do it in the real world. Well, you can't go do it in the real world, so no place to go. So we started looking for what, will, what would be the worst possible thing to try to burst and catch us before it can, before it can spread. And that would be a clay pipe, because it's under a lot of tension, it's very brittle, and when you break it, it goes in a million pieces. So we went up to Bridgewater, we dug a trench, and we put, let me get my, hey, okay, where did my helper go? Trying to, I get the brains of the operation over here. We went up and we got a 30 foot long trench. So knowing that there's no way to know what's going on under the ground 17 feet down, I, I'm treating it like a nuclear project and I've done lots of nuclear projects. We're doing three controlled situations in the ground, and we're keeping track of everything, and then we're digging the pipe up to see our results. We were hoping for 60% coverage. The state would have been happy at 40. We were hoping for 60, and we, we finally got to get ready to see what we got to do on the second burst. The third burst will be this Monday, and the sewer guys are going up with us to watch the, the third one in the ground. So, grab me all my pictures again. Yeah, there's a bunch of shells in before we go next to us. We can drive along there. So as it's getting coming down, it's all being caught in this resin. 
as the bullet pulls through, the head's about this long. If it pulls through in the back, there's, there's two jets with high pressure water. The stuff is activated by water. I, I tuck some, I have it out in the truck. I forgot to bring the ammo, we'll grab it if someone grab it. I tuck some in a cup to show the state this resin I put together. I put four drops of water in the top of the cup in a matter of a minute. It sealed itself off completely. You could turn it over, it would not leave it at all. And the bottom is still liquid. Once it burns up the water, it stops working. So you gotta give it more water to activate it. So let's put them over there. So what we've done is we've, we've cleaned this pipe off and that guy's just down there checking it. So it's been blown with 150 PSI air with a three quarter inch hose. And we dug on the side and we blew the dirt off so there'd be no chance of damaging it with the big excavator. And uh, now let's go to the last slide. And as you can see, as, it, as it's tapering off and it's losing the water, it, 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 it's not as, as aggressive. So here we are, we're, we, he, where he's walking is where we dug on the side, and now he's excavating it out of the ground with nothing but air. So a lot of it, and none of it came off, we got it completely undone, but none of it, once it was into the material, would come off. You can, uh, and that piece we, we passed around, that's actually exactly what it's like. And I do have a piece of this pipe out in the back of my truck, so we cut it up. Um, so at the end of the day, you're going to have a system like nobody else in the, in the world right now. And you're going to have a system that's not going to fail. And you're going to have a system with zero joints. Um, one thing, and I'm not trying to draw the board, so don't hear me wrong, it's because I don't want to do that part. Um, I would if you want me to, but I'm not <laughs> There's lots of guys. But you have that asbestos <coughs> pipe still running up under your house and, and, and up right in all the way back to where it hooks in underneath the house. So you really need to think about getting someone to shoot that line on that and someone to wrap that before the EPA goes down and goes crazy. And it's a lot easier to do it on your own and get it done before they come down and start forcing you to do it. Can you repeat that one? What yeah. do you want us to do before the EPA comes? No, what I'm saying is the, the, the pipe, your drain pipe is coming out of your house, yeah. but it's also asbestos. I thought it was orange bird. Orange bird is, is tar and like a fiber wrap from the, from the 30s and 40s and back that far back, right? But it's not, it's all asbestos. So like I say, the town's obligation stops at the street. Um, the, the town might decide to have us shoot further up that line on the inside. But what I'm saying, as the homeowner, especially if you've got a crawl space, you really should get someone to wrap that. And it needs to be somebody that knows what they're doing. But um, you don't want to get in a situation that you're being told to cut it off and ship it to Idaho. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Wrap it while you can. I've wrapped it under under bridges all over Rhode Island, Connecticut, Florida. That's what everybody's doing because it's, if you get it wrapped and you get it sealed tight, you're not going to be in that boat. You have to cut it and ship it away. Exactly. The dad's house has a a slab, yeah, slab. Yeah, slab. Yeah. You have to put underneath that nope, slab. No, nope, no, nope. So that's fine. That's fine. It's under the ground. Where, where it breaks the air, that's where you get in trouble when it comes out of the ground. Okay. Oh, All right. So. Yes, ma'am. Because I have in my house, I have. It's not going to chase me. The way I would do it, especially where you guys live. Oh, yes. Yes. Excuse me, Daddy. Yes. Uh, please, if you want to talk, yeah. could you keep it down somewhat? Oh, and perhaps, Danny, time. if you repeated the question oh, the mic before you give the answer. I'm going to invite Eleanor 
to come to one of my houses in South Middleborough and see what I did. I had, I had asbestos and I had extremely high water. But it was a deal of a lifetime. Two buildings and a giant garage for $200,000 because they had three feet of water in the basement and asbestos by the place. So what I did was I called Truex and got, got those guys to come in, the wonderful guys. They got a big back truck and they will suck that sand out from underneath your house without making a mess. Then they'll pull it into that truck. It's, at this point, it's just plain sand. It goes very fast. And they'll make an area that a guy can go in there and work. And they can wrap, they, that pipe can get wrapped by a person that's licensed to do asbestos wrapping, not, not your grandson. And, uh, and, and then, unless he's smart, then let him do it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what you do. You would suck that sand out and just make a trail to go in there and work. And then you can leave that trail when you've got that in the future. And it's not, and all it is is a four inch hose that will move that sand so fast it's unbelievable. And then you can just work your way in and then you've got a way to leave your house. Is that an asbestos? What's the difference that I that, that, Well, Truex would charge you, they would charge you about $2,500 a day for that truck and the crew, but they would get a lot done. I mean, there's no doubt they would think that that, that trail would leave your house. They would take two, they'd probably put the trail in your house and wrap the pipe for under 4,000 bucks. Um, it sounds like a lot, but uh, two weeks ago, the water department threw away three pieces of pipe that cost $4,500, and that's when they could still send it to New Hampshire. So you've got to have that back in mind, that expense. You're suggesting that uh, you can keep the questions more focused on what Danny is presenting versus your individual condition of your home, if you don't mind. Anything you guys want to talk about on your house, it's all stable and talk. I mean, I'm, just, I'm not looking for work. I can steer you the way to good people. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I live on Baker Street. Yes. Uh, is this project going to be just Long Kiko, or is it going to be the full 130 houses that were in Section 1? Or this first section is coming up to Bayview. Um, it all depends on I can't speak for the town, and I probably shouldn't speak for the I mean, town. I know that the first thing was all of the 130 houses, was all that first section one. Yeah. So is this project that you're doing, is that just Long Kiko, or is that going to be that first section? That's, that's Long Kiko 2, baby. Long Kiko 2, baby. Yeah, so can I talk about what the town's thinking, or should I keep my mouth shut? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, focus on the area of your contract. I'll say that the town has a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, a great plan. So two questions, I'm a little confused. Did you said if the pipe does the ground, then we don't have to worry about it if it's enclosed on the ground. Is that so right? Correct. So why do we have to suck out the sand and then cover the pipe if it's on the ground? Because she was saying she's got she's got no room to work under her basement. She's got no room. She's too close to the ground. And does it after a certain year? Like I'm almost positive my house is PVC. Yeah, mine is also. Oh, yeah, a lot of them probably are. Okay. A lot so of them probably are. No concern. What we know, all of the laterals that we see coming up out of the ground from that main, because we found every one of them, every one of them was asbestos. Well, I'm on one people. So, so I built the house, but here's I know it's PVC. Well, possibly they got it to a point and switched to PVC, and if they did, you're home free. You're out of, you're out of that problem. Can yes. you tie PVC into asbestos? No, the, the states, the states added to its asbestos right now, bag it, tag it, ship it to Idaho. And that's what we're trying to change. Right, so, so, the, so you're going to remove a section of pipe, and then there's going to be a pipe going in the middle, in it, right? Correct. So you can't physically attach it. No, no. No, and plus we got to get down through that whole pipe because the joints are out of, out of room. There's a there's a man here that's a realtor, I think. He, he watched when they were doing it, and we saw it when we first got involved. The joints are all not good in that pipe. Okay. So the pipe is, the pipe is going to be an endless problem and an endless headache. So that's why we took that. That kind of answered my, my next question. I'm sorry? That kind of answered my next question. Okay. Any, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Are you the sole bidder for the project? No, ma'am. There was three. We were we were considerably under the others, um, and we agreed to work with the others because there was no way we would have got the money for any of them. I'm wondering why the 
Because they weren't below bidders. The, meet, the meeting would be with the contractor and the people. And, but they would all have to use this process. And, and, and to be to clear about that, I filed for patents on it because it didn't exist. And uh, the state is going to not approve it. They're going to allow it once going through the what's going through these phases. Because their feeling is by saying it's allowed instead of approved. They won't get overwhelmed by all the other communities that are that are battling the same situation you guys are. They they want to they want to control it and know it's going to, it's everything we say it is before they've got to do it for the big way. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Joe Porter. Hi, Joe. Um, lifelong professional of speech, and I'm also have a civil engineering company. So I just got a couple of quick technical sure. questions. What size is the current pipe? The current pipe is eight inch. You're bursting that and capturing the. They, they won't allow. They won't allow bursting. It's got to be. It, that's what I'm saying. The head did not exist. You're only going to allow scribing. And so they when you scribe it, is it the pipe going to collapse? No. So no. what size is the pipe going to be interior when you're done? Eight inch. Okay. It'll stay eight inch pipe, and <coughs> it'll, it'll lift the other pipes. You can see, like I said, I got a piece out there. We use six inch, and you're willing to put a six inch. Okay. And, the, and the pipe that's already there will be supporting that one also from not being. What you got out there right now is if the pipe is just it basically in soup. So this will support that pipe and help support that pipe. We've asked the state, which I don't think they're going to allow, we've asked them to let us in tune the stuff we have to cut loose out there and not have the town suffer the expense of shipping it to Idaho. They've not said no to that, but we're so far down the road that I was basically told, let this one get through and get approved uh, before you start asking for anything more. But the goal would be to do this type of a process because any other process out there, you would dig up that entire street, you would take every bit of it out of the ground, you would ship every bit of it away, and it would be ungodly expensive. This, we're going to be digging one 30-foot trench, everything else stays in place. So. What's the total length of the pipe that you've been being rehabbed? 280, 289 feet. How much of it do you actually have to remove? 30 feet. 30 feet. Yep. So now is the bypass going to be at the same elevation or is it going to be above it? The bypass is going to be above it, but the new, and the new sewer will also be above it. We're going to run right above it. Uh, there was some confusion about where the elevations were. And that's another problem out there. And it's caused a lot of these problems. That pipe is completely flat. Every manhole is exactly the same thing. So this will get rid of a lot of those problems too. Anyone? Um, the only other thing is, uh, you thought it was gonna be three weeks? That were you gonna be? Three to four weeks. Three to four weeks. And, 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 and I'll tell you why, it's strictly National Grid. We can't, yeah. we can't control them. And no. I mean, so they are an entity on themselves. And so, so this is what I'm asking for as soon as we get this contract signed over. We want to go directly, immediately to work to start doing that top piece because every piece we can get done because we can go back and cut that plastic out of the way when we go down and build the pit. So then all those other houses were already hooked up and running on the new system and not ever be out of service. And they, weld the pipe back together and tie it in when we're done. So we can get a jump on a whole lot of this. The new water main can go in while we're waiting for National Grid. Uh, National Grid's gonna kill us because we, that is exactly where we have to put the pit. And when they come out themselves and say, wow, we really don't know where these gas lines are, that is scary. Yeah. <laughs> so we can really stop marking in the wrong place. Yeah, so what we did was we were in a huge hydro aspect that in situ format is now, and we, we just sucked up and we found them all. And we know where every one of them is now. We found them on both sides of the street so we can mark them. Okay, anybody's got a Yes, sir. So every single homeowner is going to have to pay to make their sewer into the main, right? No. 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 No, they said, I'm saying 
Only what I'm saying, what I said no, was, absolutely not. council obligation stops if you're property line. Right. If you don't want to do anything, that's entirely up to you. Uh, all I'm saying is, is if you can do it, or you can do it without someone telling you you have to do it, it's going to save you a lot of money. That's only if it's asbestos. Only if it's asbestos. If it's plastic, there's no reason to touch it at all. And if it's buried, you don't have to touch it. That's right, you don't have to touch it. If it's below ground, just leave it alone. Yeah, if it comes, yes sir. So this phase is just going to impact the people of that 300 linear foot uh, is that correct? Yes, but, and I'm not speaking for the town, I'm just saying what, what I would do. That pit's going to cost a half a million dollars. There's no getting around it. So if you can shoot the baby and, and things go well, and you can pick that machine up and turn it around and shoot the other direction, that's going to take a half a million dollars off the next bill. All right, so then it's possible that the town is going to suggest to you that you do that and that the people that would be impacted by this new modification of the sewer system could be Bayview <coughs> as well as Long Pico, right? Yes. Or, uh, yes. Not pleasant. No. No. Okay. No, no, All right. So no, no. those that, those are the streets that are going to be impacted. Long Pico up to Bayview and possibly Bayview on up. Is that right? I would I would say. That would be what the town would hope for. That would be the town would hope for. Okay. All right. I, I, I absolutely tell you, the town is 100% got you guys as best interest to on this one. Right. Okay. He, he was first. Yes, sir. So if we're going to be doing the same pipe, what's the deflection rate on the new? I'm sorry, Ray. What What's the deflection rate on the new pipe? Because it's just floating in it right now. What do we have? Stress cracks on it? On, the, on the deflection on it? Yeah. Well, the new pipe is going to be. Uh, 5 H H D P E, so it's going to have reflection really well, but it's also to be encased or armored with the old pipe in that solution. So it's going to be strong. It's not going to. Uh, it's, it's not going to go anyplace. That's for sure. It's going right. to help it on the floating. If it's washing away right now, would it just keep on getting worse, and then we have no support for further lines? No. Once you stop the I and I, the washout's going to stop. It, when you get the war shot, that stuff's winding up in these pump stations. Because it's acting like a bit sure it's sucking all the fines out through the cracks and everything in. Here, here's, here's the dirty secret about I and I nobody wants to talk about. When the water's high, when the water's high, the, 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 the ocean water's getting in. When the water's low, the sewage is getting out. Or when the sewer goes under a lot of load, like where you have a blockage in a line and you've got all these surcharges, that sewage is going out of those same cracks that the water is coming in. Right? And that's something they never want to talk about at the big EPA conferences because I spoke at a bunch of them. And every time I start talking about that, it's the same thing after the show. We can't fix that, so why talk about it? Well, that was another reason why I had such a job on this. I can show you. I did papers on this 10 years ago at the University of South Carolina on what was coming with asbestos and why we need to get in front of it. So, do you have any other questions? When you were asking, you were saying that you, in the future you could be going up Bayview. Yes. What about down Bayview? Yes. That also. But we might, we might change the game a little bit here and there just to try to save some money, and we might not. If this goes well and it goes fast, it's bulletproof, and that's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for zero I and I, not 80%, 90%, zero I and I, and no it is zero I and I. And infiltration, exfiltration. Infiltration, water coming in, or sewers. The leaks in the pipe. Oh, the leaks in the pipe. Thank you, John. We did we did uh, we did 165 manholes up on the other side of Boston and uh, we cut their flow by 33 percent. And we did fourteen thousand in DeKalb County, Georgia, and we cut their flow in half. And that's just a fact. And if they would have fixed all the manholes around Boston, they would have never needed Deer Island. It's 40% clean water. And that's why if you go up in the South Middleborough, Cranberry areas, or warming up Bridgewater, where they used to go duck hunting, they're growing corn there now. And that's it's just because that water's being sucked out of the aquifer and pumped out in the ocean. <coughs> so, anybody else got a question for me? Yes? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, how, how is the new piping going to be tied into supposedly the asbestos piping coming out of a house? Uh, the way that's going to happen will probably be with Franco couplings. They're rubber. They right. crank down. Right. That and we, if, if, if I would like to see it be done with a clean up, but they're a plastic clean out. So if you get a plug, you can go back and clean it easy. Yeah. You go down and clean it easy, and nobody's dealing with that asbestos pipe again. Okay. And that's that you're not talking about a lot of expense. That's 60, 60, 80 bucks or so to buy a clean out. Yeah. It goes right into the line. That it goes on price on that, right? Yeah. So there's not a whole lot more I can tell you. Um, I'm glad to give you my phone number. I won't keep secrets on you. Um, if, if, this thing, if this thing crashes and burns, which we don't, we don't think it's going to, we don't think there's any chance it's going to. Um, the last thing I would say, I'm dealing with this a lot and all over the country. You guys should get particular. You guys should get signatures in favor because nothing gets a politician or a governor's attention quicker than a couple thousand signatures. And then they'll take a big vote. Now, Danny. It's going to cost you a whole bunch of money. Wow. And that's a big sign. That's going to cost right enough. Uh, so I think, I, I think I've covered it the best I can. Uh, now, Danny, your, your issue, crash and burn, is a lot of the clothing. <laughs> I think you're, you're bringing up the crash and burn part. It's not a good quote. <laughs> but here, but here's the thing. We're not going to let it crash and burn. Where do we go from here? This is the first application. 
that they're going to apply. Danny, in, in the process of getting this approved, has gone, well, I think we, if there's one Monday, you'll have three tests that you'll actually have done for this process. So it has to go through an approval process prior to it even coming down your street here. Yeah, we really like a nuclear project. We've actually, we've done, we've done framework, we've done, we've done, done, and then we're taking them back up to see how long it works. Because we would never take it on either. And I would never put the kind of money up I, I did put up if I didn't absolutely believe this was going to work and, 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 and done what we've done. Of the three that he's done, well, the fourth, third one being uh, hopefully Monday Weather Committee, he's done it with different soils, different applications, so that he goes through all this process experimentally, and it's approved by a third party. The state is going to obviously support this, and they're the ones, the criteria that is really giving him the reason to do this. Yes. Fair enough. This, this one here. Dirty soil with corn oil. We did everything. We put it in the mud hole and buried it in mud. It was just like this. And we lined it, but what we lined again was a fluorescent light to a light bulb. And we were able to get the end off the light bulb and get it to, get it to hold its shape. And then, then we lined it. And there's not one bit of that, that light bulb that got away. Every bit of it was captured. And that's when the state started saying the guy's got something. So, but to answer your question, to a degree you're getting big. There's millions of miles of fused, because we've got an engineer right here backing up on this, a fused HDPE pipe. So, if if any, if there was any way for a failure, it would be we had a malfunction with the pumps, with the, with the material we're pumping in there to turn the soil. So we're putting two 5,000 PSI, five gallon a minute pumps on that line, separated from each other to make sure that can happen. We got water jets in there to make sure we're, even though we got plenty of water down there, there's no such thing as too much water with this product. So we don't see there's any way in the world to fail. Cool. Yes, sir. Have you reached out to the National Grid yet to see how far out they are? Yeah, you know what they said? When we get to it. And Derek, <laughs> and Derek went crazy. Right. Derek was like, that is not an answer. I need an answer. <clears throat> so. It's too much PR to see. Yeah. So any, anything else? I mean, ask me anything you want. I'll try. It, it does say, I mean, we don't want to talk about the grinders, but isn't there um, asbestos? Would that uh, be um, asbestos needed to be removed for that job? If you put the grinder pumps in? Yes. It, it would not need to be removed, but it would have to be all filled with cement. Mm -hmm. And that's no easy trick either. And, and then if, say, if you just leave it in the ground, it, it's water down there. It's going to, it's, and that's that's our big concern at the state. Absolutely proved us nothing's going to get away. So, and if you look at the, and I just had this conversation with me about yesterday. If you look at how many hands have to touch it once it leaves the ground here, it's it's crazy. It goes from one place to another place to another place, and now it's going to go from one place to another place to so a dump truck or a train to Idaho, and then get all handled again. So a process like this, and this is why the state wants it, a process like this, you're cutting out in this case, you're taking out 30 feet, 24 to 30 feet, not 280 feet. That in and alone in itself is unbelievable savings. And imagine how if they had to dig that whole street up down 17, 18 feet, where are you going to take all that dirt? It, it, and it's not just here, it's everywhere. And you find me one town and put those pumps in that are happy. You're not going to find it because I'm one town just did them. Where I said if this works, they're going to do that. They spent that money. What was done before? Is that something new? A new environmental law? Or what was this? No, it's been around since 1970. That's why it's so hard to change it. It's just hard. And and if we get it changed, and they're not going to just say, hey, it's all changed. What they're going to say is this process, in our opinion, is the best we've ever seen. And it will be allowed, and then the pilot will continue on. And they don't want the liability, they just say to go at it and you're fine. Right. Um, and and the, the, real, the reward for us is, is to continue doing these, these buried tests in a safe environment where we can dig them up, 
and win the trust of the Massachusetts DEP and then take it to the federal office. And uh, I talked to Christina New about it last Friday. She was the head of the Army Corps of Engineers for Piping and Tunneling. And she said, if you can make that work, it will be the best gift that was ever given. Because there's no way to kill the damn stuff. Danny, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. I want to express my appreciation to Mary Raskin and Kathleen Morris for allowing us to happen here in your lovely community center. And this being uh, the end of the presentation, entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to take a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, everything. And Danny.